Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Millionaire Mentorship Call number 317. Wow. Oh, these months go by so fast, but I could be here because you're here. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being a part. My good friend, Tori from Atlanta and Colette from New York, thank you for joining us. Millionaire Mentorship Call number 317 really struck me because the topic for today is managing expectations. And if there's one thing that can cause us to set ourselves up for failure, it's unrealistic expectations. I love to open with a quote and I, this quote always got my attention, and it says this, manage your expectations, and you will manage your disappointments. Todd Lowry, manage your expectations, and you will manage your disappointments. One of the reasons I think that we often set ourselves up for disappointment is that there's an interesting principle and it says, you can do anything, but not everything. Many times when we set out on our success journey, we want to do everything. And to attempt to do everything sets us up in so many ways to one, lose focus, you know, because the power of focus is that you can give your attention and your intention to one particular endeavor and work at it until it's completed. And so when we have unrealistic expectations, we can set ourselves up for failure by seeking outcomes that are inconsistent with our level of skill at that time, number one, that are inconsistent with our level of commitment, number two, and then inconsistent with our level of activity. You know, many times, there's a great phrase and it says many times people talk on the path, but walk in the grass. And so what does that mean? In other words, we can say things that we want to do. We can state our goals and state our, our dreams and we can know and recite all of the necessary plans to accomplish those goals. But then when, we, when the rubber hits the road, we, we fall short. And so talking in the path and walking in the grass is saying that you are projecting one thing in your expectations, but then living something else in your realizations. So managing expectations. First key is there are a number of different ways we set ourselves up. We have one, we have the expectations for ourselves. Two, we have expectations that we have of other people. Three, we have expectations that other people have of us. And then four, we have expectations of the world in general. Sometimes expectations of the world in general reflect your outlook. Your, 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 method, your methodology, your method of doing things. And so let's look at these one by one. When you have your own expectations of your, on yourself, the, the definition of expectation is that expectation is a strong belief that something will happen, that something will manifest in the future. It is a belief that someone will or should achieve something. Expectation can even be one's um, prospects of receiving an inheritance. And so this idea of expectation being that a belief that something will happen with respect to yourself. Those of us on this call this morning, I guarantee you that many of us have set out to do things, to accomplish things. We've written our goals. 
and we've started out on the path to accomplish those goals. But when we set unrealistic expectations based on one, our level of skill. One of the beautiful things about it being an athlete is most athletes understand that you do not go into the arena until you have properly trained because they get proof positive right away that when you get into the ring and you have not properly trained, chances are you're going to lose. I was talking with the great boxer, one of the former heavyweight champion, uh, James Bonecrusher Smith. And he said that he had gotten a call from Don King for a championship fight. He and Don King had been in um, legal, um, <laughs> a legal entanglement for a while. And he said he'd gotten a call from Don King and said, I got a championship fight for you. I think he was um, fighting one, whoever the world champion was at that time. And so um, he said, great, you know. And Don said, well, we can resolve our differences. This fight should work it all out. Bonecrash said, great. When's the fight? Next week. So what does that say? That meant that Bone Crusher did not have the time to prepare for the fight. And so many times we set ourselves up for an opportunity and we have not prepared ourselves for that opportunity. So our expectations of being victorious are often set us up for failure. We can jump into business. Many times we go into business and we'll have these great expectations of immediate success with very little work. And then when it doesn't happen, we give up and quit. Now, to continue with the Bone Crusher Smith story, Bone Crusher could have said, hey, I don't have time, short notice. But Bone Crusher recognized an opportunity. Many times opportunities present themselves when you're least prepared to handle them. And so if you look at his expectations, Bone Crusher's expectations, his expectations initially were, I don't have time. I'm out of shape. I'm going to lose. Many times we have that same situation where we look at an opportunity and we say, hey, I'm not prepared for this. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the education for this. I don't have the relationships for this. And we let the opportunity pass. Bone Crusher took the other um, alternative. He said, look, if I only have a week to prepare for a championship fight, number one, the assumption was that the other guy had been rehearsing and practicing for this fight. One of the keys that help us one of the things that undermine our efforts is when we make assumptions and so if we want to manage our expectations the number one thing to help manage our expectations is to make no assumptions and so in the bone crusher analogy if bone crusher had assumed that the fellow he was fighting had been rehearsing and practicing and training all month or for two months. Normally they train six to eight weeks for a fight. If he had made that assumption, he would have probably said, no way. But he did not make that assumption. He focused the assumptions for a victory. And re remember this term, folks, assumptions for victory. He focused the assumptions for victory on himself. And so what he said was this, if I'm going to win this fight, I need to win it in the first or the second round because I'm out of shape. I'm not prepared, but I know that based on pure adrenaline and desire to win, I can go one or two rounds. And so my strategy must be to go into that round in the first round. Most people, most boxers, my dad was a boxer. Most boxers use that first round to feel out his opponent to dance and what they call it, to bob and weave and to see what the opponent is really like to size him up. But Bone Crusher said, I can't do that. In order for me to be victorious, I need to come out slamming and bamming. And that's exactly what he did. He said, I got to put it all out there in that first round, in that second round, because if I don't, it might not be pretty. Well, it worked. And so when we talk about managing expectations, 
Number one, make no assumptions about the situation, more assumptions about the outside part of what you're attempting to do. Number two, though, make a realistic assessment of who you are and where you are. So when you look at your current situation, and, and folks, it's so important to be real and honest with yourself. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the, you know, if I win this thing, then I'll be the greatest. I'll get this. I'll get that. We get so caught up in the exuberance of possibility that we don't look at the rationality of reality. Now, I'm not saying to put yourself in limitations, but I'm saying to look at where you are where at that moment. They say, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So when you assess your own capabilities, your own level of skill, your own level of commitment. You know, many times folks will go into like a home-based business and they'll go into it with 40 hour a week expectations where they can only give 10 hours a week because they're already working on a job to provide for themselves and their family. And so to make realistic assessments of your own capabilities, of your own level of skill, of your own time availability. You see, one thing that we all have in common, we have the same number of seconds in a minute, the same number of minutes in an hour, the same number of hours in a day. And so when we say manage expectations, the time element is a critical part of that consideration. So from the point of view of expectations of your own performance, expectations of yourself, what you expect to do, what you are capable of doing towards making your life the way you want it to be. Make no assumptions, be realistic. And then third, recognize that everything is possible, that anything is possible. Don't let your expectations narrow your vision so much that you can't see beyond the possibility to the, beyond the probability to the possibility. Dr. Breakthrough, a great uh, martial artist, a 10th degree black belt, was sharing once he, was, he had broken 10 boards. And, you know, when you see a person break 10 boards, you kind of, you, they get your attention. And I said, when you're breaking a board, what do you focus on? You focus on the board? He says, no, I focus on a point three inches below the last board. And so when I exert my punch, my blow, I want to go to that place three inches below the last board. In our lives, when our own personal expectations, then we are facing a goal or facing a challenge set our expectations just beyond the last limitation, the last obstacle. And so this way, when you have your expectations that I'm going to complete this task, don't look at the end of the task, but look at where you're going to be when the task is done. We often say, write the vision, make it plain, and write it in sensory terms. How does it look? How does it smell? How does it feel? When we pursue an, a goal, an objective, then let us look at how it's going to feel when we get it, how it's going to look when we get it. This way, we see beyond the obstacles to the realization of that that we're seeking. And so when we manage our own expectations, we, there are certain questions we can even ask ourselves sometimes and say, we may ask ourselves, you know, what do I expect of myself in this particular situation? Clarity is critical. When we go for a goal, we often say, write the vision, make it plain upon tablets that he may run that, read it, that, that you can execute your plan. If you don't have clarity about your goal, about your objective, that's like not having a direction and trying to put no direction in your GPS. You can't get there. And so if you don't have clarity about your objective, it's very difficult now to assess your own expectations because you're not clear about where you're going. 
sometimes when we're dealing with ourselves and our own expectations, we have to ask ourselves, what do I really expect to happen? We must be as specific about our expectations as we are about our planning and our goals. And so when we set out to do a particular activity, we have to have a true picture of what success looks like for us in that particular activity. Once you have a clear picture of what success looks like, then you can say to yourself, you can do that self-analysis and say, do I have the skill level to do that? Do I have the commitment level to do that? Do I have the time availability to do that? Now, you analyze not to knock yourself out, but to be realistic about how to apply yourself to get the desired outcome. You have to be like bone crusher. You say, well, my time is limited, okay? My skill level is, 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 is at a particular level, but my desire is great. You see, many times desire can make up for the lack of skill. The lack of clarity, though, is essential. That desire can be so strong that you refuse to lose. There are two ways to accomplish your goals. There are two ways to win. You can win by being absolutely better than everybody else, executing better than everybody else, and coming out on top. Or you can win by refusing to lose. When Muhammad Ali fought George Foreman in the rumble in the jungle, Ali refused to lose. He was clearly out of shape. He was clearly smaller than Foreman. Foreman was a formidable adversary. But when they got into the ring and the rumble in the jungle, Ali's strategy was this. I'm going to let him punch himself out. All I have to do, said Ali, is don't get knocked out. Don't go down. So all I have to do is absorb all his punches, do my best to deflect them, but don't go down. Because there will come a point where his adversary, George, is going to be so tired, so spent, that he can't throw another punch. And that's exactly what happened, I think, in the seventh round. And it happened so fast because Ali had pent up that, that energy inside, and he uncoiled like a snake and knocked George Foreman to the next day. That's how we have to be, folks. When we're talking about managing expectations, don't use that as a limitation, as an expression of your fear and the past failures, but use the management expectations as a way to create a realistic assessment of your possibilities for success and what you have to do to accomplish it. Now, let's look at expectations of other people. that we have. When we have expectations of other people, we often set ourselves up for disappointment. In relationships, when people go into relationships, each person has a vision of how they would like that relationship to be. But if the vision of the way that they would like it to be is not consistent with the reality of what it is, it can lead to challenges it can lead to disappointment. So when we have expectations of other people, we have to now recognize that when we have expectations of other people, we must question our own expectations and say, are we, are the expectations we have of somebody else based on our needs, our goals, our hungers, and our desires? And so when we are in a relationship, a personal relationship or a business relationship and our expectations of the other person is based on our own needs as opposed to that person's capabilities, as opposed to that person's desires and goals, we set ourselves up for challenges, for problems. And so when we manage expectations with respect to other people, it means we have to know the truth of that other person, know their capabilities, and be very careful not to project our own desires and needs onto that other person's capabilities 
because one is not fair to them because chances are you can never live up to somebody else's expectations for you i know that many of us have been in relationships that have gone south i don't know why people when it goes south people say that's a bad thing okay but in relationships where things have gone south and one of the main reasons that things go south is that one person's expectations of the other person was not realistic and so let's say person a's expectations of person b when they're not realistic when they're not based on the truth of who person b really is and what person b's goals and objectives are then when person b does not perform up to the expectations of person a person a is disappointed is unhappy you know i mean they are really upset about it because how can you say you love me and you didn't do a b c and d on the other side person b now is overwhelmed because person b is operating in person a's field of expectation and person b cannot live up to that other person's expectations so i challenge those challenge us those of us on the call today are you trying to live up to somebody else's expectations of you that's a formula for disaster because it's extremely hard to live up to somebody else's expectations of you one because they're not you but two because if they have not truly understood you and know the truth of you then you're set up for failure you set up for disappointment now there's a positive side of, of expectations you know we often say people rise to the occasion and so in expectations of other people a good teacher is one who has expectations of the student that are a little higher than maybe the student's level of achievement at that particular time but those higher expectations give the student a desire to grow you know, as a, a, a person in a relationship, when a person, a student or a spouse or, or a significant other, when they want to please you, if it is consistent and congruent with what they are about, in other words, person B is about, then it can cause the whole ship to rise. People often perform up to the level of your expectations. And when you have a relationship like that, boy, thank goodness that's powerful because when when one person performs up to the level of the other person's expectations and they feel good about it when they don't feel that they are sacrificing themselves for that other person's expectations incredible things happen when you have those relationships that are empowering where each person feeds off the other but feeds off the other in a positive way so that they create a a virtual harmonic you know the law of relationship says when two or more gathered on one accord i am i am the making power where one plus one is more than two so when the when the expectations of person a are congruent with the capabilities of person b and the expectations of person b you create a harmonic and you just go on and on and it gets better and better and better i'm sure you really have experience some of those relationships where it just seems to get gooder and gooder and gooder and when you do hang on to it because it's special the third relationship that we have to be aware of is other people's expectations of you when you are in a job environment and the employer has expectations of you that are unrealistic based on your level of skill you know you've been in job situations where people are working 50 and 60 hours a week to, to keep a job to live up to the expectations of their employer many times people take advantage of you by having unrealistic expectations of you based on your level of skill and so in those environments i've seen people working on a job they have to do it 
over and over and over, they have to work extra hours because they can't afford to lose the job. They have to feed their families. They have to take care of their responsibilities. And sometimes people use that to make you jump, to make you want to holler. And so other people's expectations of you, when you live your life trying to live up to somebody else's unspect expectations of you, if that person does not truly understand you, if that person does not truly love you, if that person does not truly see the greatness in you, if that person is using those expectations of you to gratify themselves, to take advantage of you, to take advantage of your need to be loved, to take advantage of your need for approval, for recognition. See, people can do that. They can take advantage of your needs to their benefit and to your detriment. And so this topic, managing expectations is critical. That third area, your expectations of the world. Your expectations of the world have to do with your outlook on life. When we talk about, is the glass half full or half empty? If, you're, if you see the world from the perspective of half empty, then your expectations are always based on loss. It's half empty and it's going down. All the goodies have gone already. And so when your expectation is based on loss, lack, and limitation, you create that very vibration in your life which then creates more loss, lack, and limitation. And so your world outlook is critical because we live in a world that's harmonic and how we interact with it depends on our outlook. And so if we see the world as a treacherous, dangerous place, then we operate from a perspective of fear and protection. We're always trying to cover ourselves and protect ourselves so we can never have an open, good relationship. But if we live, the, live our lives with the aspect of possibility where, where, we, where our, our, our resounding affirmation is uh, good things come to me today. Good things come to me today in each and every way. Where your life affirmation is bring it on, I know it's going to be good. See, the power of expectation can, to a large extent, determine and dictate your behavior. When you expect victory, then you behave in a manner that creates victory. But if you expect failure, you behave in a manner that creates failure. So let's sum up, folks, that first, managing expectations about yourself. To make no assumptions, to be realistic about your own powers, your own abilities, your own level of skill, your own level of commitment, your own time availability. And then take actions and set expectations based on who you really are. And even more so, who you want to become. You see, your expectations can guide you up the success ladder. So have expectations that permit you to do gradual growth, day by day growth, to become the person you want to be. When you manage expectations of yourself with respect to other people, Learn patience, learn respect. Ask yourself, are my expectations of this other person selfish to benefit me alone? So that your expectations for someone else should always be based on what is best for them, what will make them grow, what will make them rise. Manage your expectations your response to the expectations of other people that other people have for you. Recognize that you are a, a most magnificent being and any person's expectations that are not congruent with your own rightness, your own glory, your own worth, your own self-worth, any expectation of somebody else that causes you to sacrifice is not good. 
Look for expectations with other people where those expectations cause you to grow, cause you to rise. And then finally, your expectations of the world. Manage your expectations of the world. Do not be colored by past experiences. Don't be a fool. Look at the, the, the way the world has responded to you and the possibilities that have been presented to you. But use those possibilities to find a way rather than as an excuse. And so in managing expectations, the goal is always to find a way that these expectations benefit you, empower you, uplift you, that these expectations benefit the people that you love, that you relate to in a way that empowers them and uplifts them, that your expectations that other people have of you, that you only respond to those expectations that are congruent with who you really are and what you want to become. And then finally, those expectations of the world where you know the world is your oyster. The world is always waiting to give you the goodness, the blessings, and all the things that you desire. When you manage your expectations, you are taking control of one of the greatest powers on earth, the power to create tomorrow in the image of your dreams, in the image of your desires, in the image of your purpose. When you can manage expectations, then you can always, each and every day, truly say, the best is yet to come. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Harris with Millionaire Mentorship Call number 317. Please share it. Please enjoy it. Please let other people know about this powerful message, knowing that it can heal them, it can uplift them, and can give them power. And so it is.